let's have a look at question five in this video so we think that the weekly incomes are actually normally distributed and we are using a t-test for a difference in before and after the incomes the hypothesis are there's that the mean difference is equal to zero versus it is not equal to zero now based on the sample data the mean difference is equal to 17 dollars after the plan and before the plan we also have the sample standard deviation of that difference 30.07 dollars at the significance level of 0 0.05 we cannot reject the hypothesis let's see if that's true or false so what do we have here we have 12 people where we compare from the 12 people we compare their incomes before and after the plan so we have here before and after recall this is the same thing as we had a couple of videos ago where we're having one sample and two subgroups so we're having a matched pairs t-test on differences we're gonna have here a matched pairs pairs t-test on differences and notice the association the relationship between this one with the sign test sign test is also matched we're also testing the differences between a group and a certain group but we're not using a t-test but a sign test because that test is non-parametric we're not looking at the normal distribution as the requirement whether here assuming it's a normal distribution we're able to use the t-test so they're very similar the only difference is the assumption of normality now how do we do the test and by the way what's happening here in the hypothesis like behind the scenes the mean difference equals to zero that's the same as saying that the mean of the before group minus the mean of the after group equals to zero since this one would be equal to that that's the hypothesis of a matched pairs t-test and the alternative that they are not equal to zero and how do we do so we do it by comparing the t-test where we're taking the sample differences so we're taking x bar before the group minus x bar after the group in our case that is represented by the x bar of that specific difference given as 17 dollars so we have it 17 over here divided by the standard error and remember the standard error is the standard deviation divided by square root of n so we have here 30.07 over square root of the number of observations of 12 so we divide it by 12 that t value is going to be equal to 1.96 that's going to be equal to 1.96 now we have to compare this with a t critical value because we have sample uh, data sample standard deviation the t critical value is going to have a 0.025 P value on one tail because um, so let's write like that the t critical value is going to have here a five percent significance level spread over two tails so one tail is going to have 2.5 percent which is the same as 0 0.025 and the degrees of freedom is going to be n minus one so we're looking for the t critical value let me change colors we're looking for the t critical value at 0 0.025 of 11 minus one sorry 12 minus one which is going to be 11 degrees of freedom based on the table that would be equal to 2.201 let's draw the distribution to see what conclusion we give so over here we're gonna have the t distribution normally distributed around the mean of zero our rejection region our rejection region could be either at the value of 2.201 so it's either here 2.201 or the negative because it's symmetrical around the mean of zero and the hypothesis is two-sided 2.201 201 on that side now this would be the possible rejection regions these two tails like that now what is our actual value 1.96 let's draw it 1.96 happens to be over here somewhere 1.96 well that's not in the rejection region so we do not reject the hypothesis we do not reject h0 what do they say we cannot reject the hypothesis well that's true and what does that mean well that means that we do not have enough evidence that the average income before and after the, the the incentive plan differs that's the idea hope this makes sense and we're done